Good morning friends. Welcome back to my channel Coding Environment. In today's video, we are going to see what is facade design pattern. So this video is the continuation of a structural design pattern series where in last video I discussed what is decorator design pattern. So let's see what is facade design pattern. So if we go and see from the Wikipedia, the facade design pattern is an object that serve as a front facing interface masking more complex underlying or structural code. So if I try to explain this statement with the very simple example, just assume that we have a three databases. One is Postgres. The second one what we have is Oracle DB. And the third one is a MongoDB. Now if you see these three databases basically provide some kind of functionalities right. The one functionality you can assume that they provide is like uh, generating a report in the form of HTML like you can see a HTML report and one can be a PDF report. So with this like uh, HTML report and the PDF report, we can assume that just three, uh, these three databases like Postgres, Oracle and DB is able to generate the reports in the form of HTML and PDF. Now suppose we have a client, a client application and this client application is trying to communicate with this Postgres, this Oracle DB and the MongoDB and trying to generate this HTML and PDF format reports. Of course, these DBs are able to provide much more complex functionalities rather than just generating the HTML and PDF reports. But just assume that this client application is interested in only generating this HTML and PDF report and not interested in the more complex functionalities provided by these databases and it also try to generate the report from all these like this client should be able to generate the report from all these three databases. If I am not using or in the absence of this facade design pattern, what this client application has to do is to communicate to this Postgres, this Oracle and this MongoDB directly. It means this client application has to create the object of this Postgres. So it will create an object of this Postgres and then it will create an object of Oracle DB and then it will create an object of MongoDB and then try to call the uh, methods or features provided by these different DBs to generate this HTML and PDF report, right? You can see how these, how these subsystem of like a subsystem like Postgres, Oracle DB and MongoDB are so tightly coupled with this client application in this absence of facade design pattern, right? If we are not using this facade design pattern, we have to directly integrate these features into this client. And this is, this is so tightly coupled that in future, the maintainability of this client application will be very hard. So to overcome this problem, what we can do is instead of creating these objects directly into the client application, what we can do is we can create a common interface. So this will be my this will be my common interface which will communicate to this Postgres also with this Oracle DB and this MongoDB and client application will communicate with this common interface and this common interface will be context sensitive, right? It means that it is not going to expose all the features provided by this Postgres, Oracle DB and MongoDB. It is just interested in providing the functionalities to generate the reports in the form of HTML and PDF. So it will just expose two API like generate HTML report, generate HTML report and generate a PDF report, nothing else. It will just provide one connection to these DBs 
and then generate HTML and generate PDF report because this client is interested only in generating these two reports. It will not expose other features. So if you go again and see the Wikipedia page, here you can see the second thing which it says is provide a context sensitive interface. This is very important. It is going to provide a context sensitive interface and not going to expose all the features provided by this Postgres Oracle DB and this MongoDB. So this is one of the very uh, like simple example of this facade design pattern. And it's, you can see here, because this client application is communicating with this common interface, it is not so tightly coupled with these Postgres Oracle DB and MongoDB uh, objects. Again, if you go and see a different example, So if you see a different example of this facade design pattern is a departmental store. So the second example or a real life example what we can see is a departmental store where there will be an operator which is the front facing and behind this there will be a cashier, there will be a helper and you can assume there will be some inventory update mechanism will be there, okay? Now, suppose a customer is coming, right? A customer is coming, he don't have to communicate to the cashier, to the helper, or to this inventory update mechanism, or to the different uh, like section also. So suppose there will be a like, uh, we have we have something called uh, food service food uh, department then there can be a general store department right so this customer don't have to communicate to this cashier this helper or this inventory update mechanism or this general store department it has to just communicate to this operator here, operator is acting as a facade. Here, operator is acting as a facade. And it is helping this customer to not get directly communicate to the cashier helper or inventory update mechanism to get its object. If it is coming here to buy some object, this operator will be able to handle the, the request of this customer to which department it should go. So this is one of the facade design. Uh, so this is one of the more example of this facade design pattern. Now let's try to understand this using a simple Java code. So let's try to understand this facade design pattern using Java code. I have written this Java code already into IntelliJ to save the time. Let's see the classes one by one. We have a MongoDB class. We have a MySQL helper class. And similarly, I have PostgreSQL classes. These classes have three methods basically. One is to connect to the DB, one is to generate the report in a form of HTML, and one is to generate the report in the form of PDF. So this is the HTML report and this is the PDF report, and this will help us to connect to the DB. Similarly, MySQL class will also have these three methods, connect to the DB, generate the PDF report, and generate the HTML report, and similarly for the MongoDB. Now, this is my facade pattern test is the client code. Now, if I am not using the facade design pattern, what I have to use is to, these three classes I have to directly integrate into this facade, uh, into this client code, right? And by doing so, what we are going to do is to tightly couple my client code to the subsystem code, which is not a good idea. And which is of course not a good idea to tightly couple the two different subsystems code. To overcome this problem, if we are using this helper facade design pattern, which is going to be like a front face for my client code. And in this facade design pattern, I have just one method, which will take the DB type, take the report type and table name. And depending on the DB type and report type, it is going to generate the report. So simple for the client, right? Client don't have to go and see how we are going to connect to the DB, how the report is generated by the DB, which 
db we have to choose right so it has to just call this method nothing else depending on this this helper class is going to communicate to these three databases like what database client has passed and then it is going to create the connection generate the reports and the type of report what client has passed right and depending on that it is returned uh, going to return that to the client code so let's see so let's see this helper uh, facade class in detail a bit so what you can see here i have a switch case where depending on the mysql class i am creating the connection to the mysql database and then depending on the report type i am creating the report it is if it is html i am creating the html report and if it is pdf i am creating the pdf report same thing goes for the postgres and the mongodb also so depending on the postgres it is going to connect to the postgres db and then depending on the type of the report it is going to create that report in that format now this helper facade class is getting used in this client code now let let me explain this client code a uh, bit in detail so if you see these two parts right these two parts i am trying to show like if you are not using the facade design pattern what you are going to do you are going to tightly couple this mysql helper class and this postgres sql helper class into this client code right this we don't want and to overcome this problem we are going to use this helper facade class now in this helper facade class as i already explained we have only one method which will take the type of the database it will take the type of the report it will take the table name and generate the report now let me run this code and see what the output we are getting and depending on that i am going to explain how this things is working so here you can see this mysql stl html report and this postgres pdf report is generated by doing the tightly couple of these two subsystems into my client code and these three statements that mysql html report postgres pdf report and mongodb report is done using the facade design pattern and here if i am using the facade i just have to pass which db i want to connect what is the type of the report i want and what is the table name so this is all about the facade design pattern i hope i i made this facade design pattern clear to all if you have any doubt please write it in comment section if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends till then have a great day and goodbye